Welcome back to the channel, guys. Take a look at today's review. I've been getting some very interesting uh, moped style e bikes. This is one of them. It's by Happy Run. It's called the G60 Pro. Want to learn more? Well, let's get into it. Now, when I received this bike, I have to tell you that it was packed extremely well. But unfortunately, uh, if you have not put a bike together in a long time or never, this is not going to be an ideal one for you to put together. And here's why. Number one, the instructions are basically useless when it comes to this bike. And also when it comes to this front wheel, that hub is disassembled completely. So you will need to either have this bike shipped to a local bike shop or you can put this bike together yourself. Just know that you will have to send off this front, uh, this front wheel to have all the hub stuff put in together by a local bike shop. Now, this bike is a class three bike and it will arrive to you as one, taking us up to speeds of, they say it's over 30 miles an hour. We're gonna see if it is today, but you'll use your half twist throttle, you'll use your cadence sensor and your five levels of pedal assist to get you there. This bike weighs 66 pounds and has a payload capacity of 330 pounds. And right now, this bike sells for $14.99 and has a one-year warranty. It only comes in a high-step version that you see here, and they say that the average rider height is between 5'3 to 6'5. It also only comes in this blue color right here. Now, Happy Run says that the G60 Pro will go up to 40 plus miles using throttle only or up to 80 plus miles using pedal assist. If you've seen any of my videos, well, we're not gonna get near that mileage today, for the abuse that I'll be putting this bike through. This rear hub motor is 48 volts with 1,000 watts. It has a peak power of 2,000 watts and 95 Newton meters of torque. It has a seven speed transmission, the Shimano Turney derailleur, a derailleur guard, and the standard Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. It also comes with a 52 tooth chain ring. It has the DY Island two piston hydraulic brake system and 160 millimeter rotors. It comes with a non-branded, spring-loaded, dual-crown fork. It has 100 millimeters of travel. You can adjust the preload and the compression. The rear suspension has 50 millimeters of travel and is non-adjustable. The rims are 20-inch. The tires are 20 by 4-inch. They're non-branded. They have a medium mountain bike pattern on them, and they're puncture-resistant. When it comes to the battery, this is a 48-volt, 25-amp hours with 1,200 watt hours of power. That is a lot. It comes with a three amp charger, which means you can charge this bike up in about eight hours. The bike itself is UL certified to the 2849, and it has an IPX rating of four, and the battery has an IPX rating of five. To charge this bike up, well, you can just use this little charging port right here, or you can take this entire battery off and charge it elsewhere. The bike is gonna come with two keys. To get the battery out, you're just gonna put your key in there, turn it, it unlocks it, you're just gonna push up, and the battery comes right out. There's also a battery indicator here on the battery itself, so you can check it while you are in the house, and then you just put it back on there, lock it back up, and you're good to go. Additional features include plastic fenders. You have these plastic and aluminum pedals. This rear seat right here, which is 23 inches long, it has BMX handlebars, and it has front and rear turn signals. Let's talk about size and fit. Now the bike itself is 66 to 67 inches. That's what I just measured. Um, I am 5'9 with a 32 inch inseam, 225 pounds. This is what I'm going to look like on the bike as I ride it. These handlebars can go forward and back and you can also scooch back onto the seat depending on how tall you are. Now it is a full suspension bike and this is how it's gonna work when I'm heading down the road. Cockpit operations. On the left hand side, you have this rubber grip with this palm rest right here. This is your front brake lever. This operates your light. These operate your turn signals, and this operates your horn. On the right hand side, you have your half twist throttle right here, your rear brake lever, your gear shifter. This is how you go up in gear by pushing that button, and this is how you go down in gear. Then you have this button down here. Starting this bike takes a couple of steps. First, we're going to turn the battery on. Then we are gonna go over here and hold this S button down until the screen lights up and it makes that beep. You have an NFC card that comes with this bike. You need to touch it right here on your screen. And now the bike has started. Here's the deal. You cannot really see 
what is going on in here. It is a cloudy day and this screen can barely be seen. I'm not even sure you guys will be able to see this on the video because I sure can't. But here is your headlight. When you turn that, hit that button, it turns it off, but it also makes a beep. Listen, I like that to let you know that you're, that something's been done. Now listen to your turn signals. I like the fact that not only does it flash up on the screen that the turn signal is going, but it's green right here showing you which one, and you hear that beeping noise. Plus, the turn signals look really cool. To turn it off, you're just going to press that button again until it turns off. Right here is your horn. Oh, that is super loud. Turn the headlight off, you're just going to hit that button again. I really like this headlight. As you can see, not only does it have a halo going around it, but then it has four additional bulbs. I am sure at nighttime, you're going to have no issues seeing down the road. Here is your rear tail light. This is what your brakes look like when you hit it. And this is what the rear turn signal looks like when the turn signal is activated. Now, I really like the fact that it also has a turn signal in the front. I believe that this display is the biggest downfall of this bike. The fact that you're not able to adjust it. And this is a cloudy day and I can barely see what is going on right here. So any kind of sun is going to make it extremely hard to read this display while riding. I also didn't see any instructions to tell me how to go from trip to odometer, how to reset things if we needed to, to switch it from kilometer to max. None of that information is in the manual. To turn this bike off, you're just going to hold down on the S button. I brought the bike inside my garage so you guys could actually see what this display is supposed to look like. I wish it looked like this all the time, but the moment that we pull out of a dark room, well, you guys saw, you're not going to be able to really see it. So let's go over the things again. Right here is your headlight. Over here is your mileage or your battery indicator. Happy run shows your trip mileage. Don't know how to switch it to, uh, to show your odometer. I'm going to ask them. Here are your pedal assist levels. This shows the bike is unlocked. This is where you put your NFC key. And that is all the, oh, and this is going to show you like another meter of how fast we are going. That's it. That's everything that's going to show you, except for when you have the turn signals on, you can see how bright that is. That's nice. Here's the left. There is the right. And then when you turn your headlight off, you hit these. Well, then it goes back to normal. This is the only time that you'll be able to see this display during this review. Let's go ahead and get this bike out on the road and see how it does. This is actually day two. Now on day one, after I did the specs, I was getting ready to take off, but I looked and it was cloudy and it ended up raining all evening, all the way through this morning. Now it's the afternoon. We're going to take this bike out, but it did give me some time to get some answers back from Happy Run on this display. I asked him how I switched from trip data to odometer, and they said there is no way to do that. And as you can see, the trip is going to reset every time the bike turns off. So there's no way of really knowing how many miles you're going to have on this bike because there's no way to access the odometer. I said, how do you switch between miles an hour to kilometers? Just in case you're getting this overseas and you want it in the UK, or if it comes to you in kilometers, how do you switch it out? And they said, you do short presses of the S button right here twice, and it will switch it. And then I asked, is there a way to access advanced settings on this? And they said, no. So guys, this is it this is what you get. And hopefully that is good enough for you. We are out here on the 606 trail here in Chicago. As you can see, you can't get any information from this display at all with uh, the sun being out. So I have hooked up my speedometer and then that way we can see that we're moving nine miles an hour. It's not, the bike is not providing any assistance. So we have it in pedal assist zero and we're just riding along. Let's go ahead and test the throttle. Now I do have it in pedal assist number one, and we're gonna see if the throttle is dictated to the pedal assist level. And I'm gonna say by the way that we've taken off, it is, as you can see, we are cruising eight miles an hour in pedal assist number one. Uh, did you hear that beep? The cruise control kicked in. <laughs> in pedal assist number one, so you can go super slow and the cruise control will kick in. Let's go ahead and put it into Pedal assist number two, are we in two? Yes, okay. And let's see uh, what the throttle does with that. In pedal assist two, we're cruising at 13 miles an hour. Let's go for three. And at pedal assist level three, we are cruising at 18 miles an hour. Let's go for four. Pedal assist four, we're cruising at 24, 25 miles an hour. In pedal assist number five, we are hitting 30 miles an hour. 
31. Right, we haven't gone very far, um, but it seems like we've already dropped a bar. Now this has, they said this battery has 1200 watt hours in it and we've already dropped a bar. And I promise you, I had, I had charged this battery up all the way as I do with all my bikes before I went and took it out. Let's go ahead and check out the pedal assist levels. I now have it in pedal assist one, and we're gonna see uh, what those speeds are. All right, now I am looking at the display and it's showing that it is six miles when the actual GPS is showing that it's eight. So the display is wrong. Not that you can see it anyways, but if, if you are able to see it, just know that this is actually two miles slower than what we're going. And with that being said, well, we are cruising at seven miles an hour in pedal assist one. We're gonna hit this S button and click it up into pedal assist two and you'll hear the beep. And now we are in pedal assist number two. Pedal assist number two has you going at 13 miles an hour. Let's go for three. Now, when you shift it into a higher level, it kicks in immediately. So there is no delay. Like once you heard that beep, then I immediately got power. In pedal assist level three, we're cruising at 18 miles an hour. Let's try four. We are at 25 miles an hour and we're going to start ghost pedaling. And in pedal assist number five, we're only doing like 26, 27 miles an hour. So you're definitely gonna get more power by using the throttle. I mean, we were ghost pedaling as well, but these bikes are made to be uh, ridden like a moped and not pedaled like a bicycle. All right, let's go ahead and do the off-road part. Now this is one part where I do not want the cruise control to kick in automatically. So we're just cruising through. Oh, and you can turn the cruise off and on by hitting the start button real quick four times. Yeah, okay, this is where I like full suspension bikes. I mean, this feels super nice. Even though I can't make any adjustment to the back, it is doing excellent on this on this uh, off-roading part, which, I, I, you know, I had a feeling that it would. I've been kind of surprised on how these mountain bikes, uh, I mean, these uh, moped style bikes do going off road, especially when they're full suspension. It is time for the hill climb. We're using throttle only. We have it in pedal assist level five. So let's go and, oh yeah, this thing takes off right out of the gate. There is no issues with the throttle on this bike. It is definitely gonna get you up this hill. It's gonna be pretty easy. Yeah, just as I figured it would be. Little effort, uh, well, really no effort put in at all. Now we're gonna try it using pedal assist only. I have it in gear one. Let's take off and see. All right, that's one full rotation, two, three, four. Okay, four full rotations before this bike wanted to kick in and give me any assist. But now that we have it, it's pretty easy. I'm kicking it up in gear. Yeah, also super easy to make it up this hill with pedal assist on once it kicks in. So this might be something that if you see a hill, you need to be getting a running start if you plan on pedaling up and down at the entire time. Already dropped down two bars which only leaves me two and for a second there it had dropped down to the lowest bar and I'm just now making it out to Lakeshore Trail we've only gone 9.22 miles now this entire time I've had the bike in pedal assist number five I went ahead and dropped it down to three because there's no way I'll be able to finish this review and do the things that I want to do with it I guarantee you that doing the sand test is just gonna kill this battery you know what, we are gonna do a brake test. I'm gonna take this thing up as fast as it can go. We're gonna slam on the brakes. We're only doing this once. I need to conserve my power. We're already down to two bars, well, three. And then once I take off, it drops down another bar. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this brake test done and see how well this bike stops. Woo, that felt good. <laughs> I smell the rubber from it. Uh, that, that felt good. And it stopped within 36 feet. It is time for the sand test. Let's go ahead and put it into pedal assist number five. That's what you gotta do. You gotta kind of cover it up so you can see what you're doing. And now we're just gonna go with throttle and see. Now I expect it to do pretty decent on, uh, on the sand over here. So let's go and give it a try. Ooh. Yeah, see we're using throttle only right now. Now I'm pedaling a little bit. Ooh, don't turn too big, don't turn too big. Oh, I turned too big. 
but it seems to have no issues moving right across the sand, which is one of the things that I wanted to see if it could do. I knew it would do well, and it does. So not only will it get you to the beach, but it'll get you through the beach. Let's talk about this bike. Now I have to tell you, this bike is extremely comfortable. And uh, because of that, it just makes you want to ride it all day. The seat, it, it is it's very nice. It's like a premium seat for a bike such as this. And uh, these grips and just the way everything is set up does make this bike extremely comfortable. I do really like the cruise control that is on this bike. I like the fact that when uh, it kicks in, you hear it beep. And you can see how well the suspension works on this bike. So that's what also helps make it extremely comfortable. You also have this big headlight up here in the front, the front and rear turn signals. You know, there's, there's like a lot of things that I like about this bike, but then there's some things that really need to be improved. And I think I've been pointing that out to you guys. The horn is also nice and loud. And really just today is just a great day to go riding. I'm glad I am out on the road. I just wish that this battery was gonna last longer and I could hang out even longer than that. I went ahead and decided to do a mileage check. Now we are out here, you can see Chicago behind me. I looked at the display, it shows that we have three bars of battery left. I got two green, one red, and the display shows we've gone 20 miles. Now, when I took a look at Strava, it shows that we've gone a little bit over 15 miles. And I have to tell you, I'm gonna trust the Strava uh, more than I will this display because I already showed you guys that the speed on the display is off. But it's time to start heading home. We're gonna talk about some things on the way there. So I'll see you on the road. All right, guys, you can see that we are down to two bars. I got one green and one red, and now we are going to try to make it home. I still have it in pedal assist number five uh, until we drop down to number one. You know, I'm still just gonna make this bike just produce everything it is supposed to be producing. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but to turn the cruise control on and off, you just hit the S button four times real quick. It'll make a beep noise and that will turn it off or it will turn it on. This is where having a full suspension bike uh, is beneficial. Uh, they just dug up this road and I am riding totally smooth. <laughs> this feels great. This has to be one of the uh, most comfortable moped style e-bikes that I have reviewed. Yo, <laughs> if you want a moped style e-bike and you want to be able to run over rough roads, holy cow, this thing is so nice. And in Chicago, I don't know if you've noticed, but we got a lot of rough roads. This thing's like riding one of those lazy boy recliners or something. It shows that we are down to one bar. I don't know if you guys can see that. So the red bar is solid right now. And we are about four and a half miles from home. So I'm pretty sure we will make it. Uh, I'm still gonna keep it in pedal assist level five. Let's just cruise on by here real slow. Hello, how are you? There is a bike lane right there, but these guys are in it. So it always makes it a little bit difficult when it comes to this section and you have to take the sidewalk sometimes. Here's where I like having a front and rear turn signal. The people ahead of me can see that I'm turning. The people behind me can see that I'm turning. I wish more e-bikes had this on it. And that indicator right there, you guys are seeing it in action. It's beeping and it's lit up. We are back here on the 606 trail. That means I'm about 3.3 miles from the house. We're going to see uh, how much longer this battery is going to be able to go before it stops providing assistance to the bike. I still have it in pedal assist number five, but we're going to be bouncing off and on. Is it going to rain again? It literally looks like it's going to rain again. And if that's the case, this will be the second time that I've been on a moped style e-bike and been caught in the rain. It looks like it's going to storm. Now we have overcast. I don't know if you can see this display any better, but I can just now start to see some of it. It looks like it's showing that we're at 16 miles an hour. Um, the bike did turn off, so the, the mileage, the trip mileage did reset. So that, I think it's kind of weird that you'll never know how many miles you have on this bike. Whenever I let off of it, it goes back to two bars, a green one and a red one. So we're going to go ahead and ride through the city some more, but kind of close to the house. So that way when it does switch over to the other, uh, when it switches back over to the red, or it starts giving me some 
indication like the red starts flashing or whatever, well, at that point, we'll start heading back to the house. And as you can see, now that it's overcast, you can see the display much better, although it's still not great. But at least I can see that I'm in pedal assist number five. It's showing that we're doing 24 miles an hour and I can see the battery level. The more I ride this bike, the more I like it. <laughs> it's just if, if the fact that it's super comfortable, these brakes feel really good. Whenever I'm giving it throttle, it drops down to the red bar, but then whenever I let off, it's still giving me the green bar. Oh boy. Okay, guys. Now the whole battery bar is flashing, and then if I let off, it gets the one bar. So I am now back to being 3.3 miles from the house, and I really hope I make it home. Let's go ahead and kick it down into pedal assist number three, and then we're gonna do some pedaling as well. I'm just too far from home for me to uh, risk it. Well, I think my wish has come true that yes, this by the time I make it to the end of this, this bike will be uh, out of battery, but will it run out beforehand? And if it does, and I have to pedal this bike home without power, will I get caught in the rain? All right, it seems like now we're just, there's no red bar. It's just flashing, as you guys can see now that we're under this tree canopy. I am too far away from home. Now, one thing I can tell you is that the bike, I said the battery is getting lower. It wasn't pulsing or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it was just going slower and giving me less power, which is a good thing. I always uh, find the pulsing kind of, you know, annoying when that happens. But I'm not really sure we're getting any assistance right now. So let me go ahead and see. Let me use throttle, see if I feel it. Oh, it's making a weird noise, but I'm getting it. Right now we're using nothing but only throttle. I'm super close to the house. We're still, uh, we're, we're still getting power, moving 11 miles an hour. As I was pulling up to the house, I lost all assistance with this bike, which is totally fine with me. We made it all the way back. I didn't have to pedal this on its own. And I would show you what the display shows for our distance with the trip, but the trip resets whenever the bike gets turned off. And there's no way I can show you the odometer because there's no access to the odometer. So there is no way at any point you're gonna be able to see how far or how many miles this bike has gone. It's just not a possibility with what they've told me on how to switch between trip and odometer. They said you can't do it. You can only see the trip and it resets every time that the, uh, that the bike gets shut off. That's why I run Strava. Strava shows that we went 27.77 miles. That is farther than what I thought this bike was going to go. And, you know, because at first, that first battery dropped, that first bar dropped, and I was like, oh, no, we're not going to be able to go that far. But the other ones hung on a lot longer, therefore allowing us to do all the testing that I wanted to do with this bike. Now, I have to tell you that this bike was the nicest, oh, my gosh, it was the most plush riding, moped-style e-bike that I have reviewed flat out period. I mean, this thing rides like a dream. This suspension is set up extremely well, and I didn't make any changes to the front forks, you know, from how it came when it came, when it showed up in the box. I didn't make any changes to it. It just rides that well as a heavier rider at 225 pounds. Love the turn signals. I love how that has a front and a rear one, and I love the fact that you can see them over here. That's one of the things that when it comes to this bike, uh, these are really nice features. The turn signal, it lights up and it shows you which one you have going, the left or the right, and then it makes an audible beep while it's turned on. So that is going to be an indicator to let you know. Now it also shows up on the screen here on the display, but you're not going to see it in the daytime. At nighttime you would. You can see the entire screen at nighttime, but during the day you're not going to be able to see it, but you can see it over here and you can hear it. Also, if you turn on the headlight, it makes a beeping noise uh, whenever the cruise control kicks in, which is a nice feature. That also makes a beep and lets you know that cruise control has just kicked in. I mean, this there's a, a super bunch of nice features, a super bunch. Yeah, there's a super bunch of nice features with this bike. I just think that if it had a better display, this would this bike would be knocking it out of the park. Now, I mean, display or not, it still rides extremely well, and I could ride this bike all day. Well, I could ride it for 27.77 miles. Now, if you are interested in the Happy Run G6 Pro, 
I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. I'm also gonna leave any discount codes that I might have uh, so that you could save a little money on this bike. But that, guys, that's it. I mean, you've watched the whole review. You've seen the good, you've seen the bad. I think the good outweighs the bad. I don't know. I, I hope you do as well. And that's it. I wanna thank you for watching. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.